Each year, Americans observe National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and South America. Thank you so much for joining us for this special presentation. I'm Natasha Paloma. We begin today showcasing our history and culture by taking a tour of a South El Paso neighborhood that has been special for more than a century. Many families in El Paso are rooted in this historic neighborhood, including my very own, Segundo Barrio, or the Second Ward. So one of the first communities in El Paso. It was the starting point for thousands of families coming from Mexico since the late 1800s. And it is a vibrant uh, population with a, a rich culture. My grandmother raised her three children here, just south of downtown, next to the U.S.-Mexico border. The working class established itself here in, in Segundo Valley. It's a typically hot afternoon in the southwest desert. Dr. Selfa Chu takes me on a journey into this historic neighborhood. The church is, is the heart of El Segundo Barrio because it congregates the community. The faded red brick church, Sagrado Corazón, or Sacred Heart, is our first stop. Founded in 1893, it is perhaps the most important to the barrio for a community that clings so tightly to its Catholic faith. The residents of Segundo Barrio tend to come to the church to not only seek for that religious guidance, but also for information. We continue our tour just a few feet away from Sacred Heart Church. The building is very important. An apartment complex rich in history. It, it is landmark that um, establishes the, the date and, and, and the person who wrote Los de Abajo. Los de Abajo by Mariano Azuela, written in 1915. It's important for the world because it is the first Mexican uh, revolution novel. Dr. Chu and I continue to walk alongside these tienditas, or stores, still open amid the pandemic. They line El Paso Street as they have for decades. Dr. Chu tells me small business is important for families in the barrio to thrive. We continue to walk and come upon the beautiful Colón Theater. And they're having uh, modifications to the structure. If we, if we look at the details, we are going to be uh, amazed. The theater was opened in 1919. Dr. Chu tells me it was a place for entertainment for Latino and African American communities. They uh, actually had to dress up to come to this uh, theater, usually. According to the county in all, Segundo Barrio has more than 650 historic buildings, including Bowie High School and San Ignacio, where this photo was taken for my aunt's first Holy Communion. The people here are proud. They're proud of their roots, proud of the hardships they may have endured, proud to be from El Segundo Barrio. Well, just one look around New Mexico, and you can see the influence of Spanish architecture. Experts say it not only provides beauty, but versatility in a time before modern technology. David Romero explains. Taking a look around New Mexico, Spanish influence can be seen in the design of homes and businesses, although with some Pueblo influence. From flat roofs to bigas to even tiles on roofs, Spanish culture is more prominent than ever. Of course, that was not the original intention of the early Spanish settlers. Instead, reflecting the designs from Spain and Mexico that not only provided functionality for everyday living, but innovative ways to conserve energy when it didn't even exist. You see it's a traditional earth roof, flat roofs, uh, 
modest materials using the vigas, the beams, you know, for the main structural elements, uh, fairly thick walls, you know, very uh, good when it comes to thermal qualities, uh, when it comes to this type of arid, you know, hot climate. Um, the portales, you know, interior courtyards, you know, which actually form microclimates as well, uh, in order to keep cool. So they, they adapted. The spread of that influence reached farther than New Mexico and the Southwest, thanks to the Santa Fe Railroad and the Fred Harvey hotels and train stations being built along the way. Continuing the traditions passed down for hundreds of years with a few modern twists, architects are still finding ways to keep the look of the landscape in New Mexico looking like the old country. The pandemic has affected many areas in our lives, and a group of artists in Rhode Island want to use their talents to bring a little color. Brittany Schaefer has more. Rhode Island Latino Art says they want to promote this stretch of Broad Street in Providence as a destination. The artist tells me this mural will heal people during this difficult time. With the stroke of a brush, Rhode Island Latino Arts brings color and positivity to Broad Street during a pandemic. The people here, I thought it's, they needed an uplifting way to get through this pandemic. The sidewalk mural is on the corner of Broad and Oxford Streets outside a popular Dominican restaurant. Rhode Island Latino Arts Executive Director Marta Martinez says Broad Street is the heart of Providence's Latino community. And that's what I promote, Broad Street. It's said corazón de, de Providence. I live in the neighborhood. I work in the neighborhood. We have a lot of great food, a lot of great culture, um, all kinds of people live here. We have um, lots of Latinx people, we have Southeast Asian, Black, White, everybody lives here. According to numbers released by the Department of Health, 59% of COVID-19 cases in Rhode Island are Hispanic and Latinx residents. Martinez tells me it's affecting families, but also local businesses and artists. Businesses all over the, the state and the country were suffering the most. Visual artists were just locked up. Statistics that show that the Latino community was the most infected, had the higher number of infections, um, really moved me to, to see if we can highlight this neighborhood. Visual artist Tamara Diaz used the sidewalk blocks to symbolize six-foot distancing and also painted masks. She says the artwork has brought the community together while also spreading important messages. It really seemed to brighten up the area. The community got involved. The Black Lives Matter, of course, movement representing. We have some nice tropical palm trees for, um, for all the people in the community to remind us of our, our homelands. Um, peace for everybody. And the project turned out to, to be a success. And Martina says this project was such a success, they are planning on doing similar painted artwork along different sidewalks down Broad Street here. Diaz tells me this paint should last for a few years. In Providence, I'm Brittany Schaefer. Coming up, COVID-19 taking an icon away. He was a singer, musician, and actor. Trini Lopez inspired many and is mourned by more. Then what do La Bamba, the E Street Band, and Jerry Garcia have in common besides being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame?